Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, today's evening session. Um, my name is uh, Ofra Moflahi, the UK professional lead for the nursing support workforce. I'm just going to get Kevin to introduce himself. Good evening, everybody. I'm Kevin Morley and I'm chair for the Nursing Support Workers Committee and also member of council for the Nursing Support Workers Committee. Um, I relish the role that I hold within being chair for the nursing support workers and also to be able to sit on council um, because within that we carry your voice and get you heard. So whatever you bring to us um, that you would like us to look into or to work around, we would certainly make sure that we can get the resources or to look at what resources we have to support you in that. Whether you're becoming a nursing ass uh, assistant or whether you're becoming um, a, a, a HCA in a new role, there are vital things that we have um, within our structure for the nursing support worker group that we we hold in the library. Um, I also attend council, so anything that we look at, such as Congress, where you have items that you'd like to speak on, we debate it in there. Um, with the agenda committee, they look at that. We also um, have um, quite a few um, structures around how the RCN runs and how we feed that into our committees. Um, but yes, I look forward to your um, your being with us here at um, the Learning and Development Workshop. Thank you so much, Kevin. Um, can I just say that it's um, it, it's an absolute delight to welcome you all, and um, we really hope that uh, certainly today's event you you certainly take some some learning uh, from the I think it's the the hour just under an hour we we've got to talk about what what the offer is within within the college. We've got some excellent speakers uh, lined up, um, and they will talk through some of the learning and uh, development resources, but also the wider offer within the Royal College of Nursing and also how relevant that is to the nursing support workforce. Um, it's really important to hear from you also. So at the end of the session, we have got some time for uh, a Q&A for you to ask your questions and we've got some moderators in the background who are going to take your questions so we can leave some time to respond to those to, to those questions. The session is going to be recorded uh, this evening so just please be mindful if you are sharing any sensitive information that the session uh, will be recorded. Um, but um, I think I'm going to hand over uh, to Andrea Child who is the professional lead uh, here at the Royal College of Nursing to talk about getting started with RCN Learn. So I'll hand over to Andrea. Thank you so much and enjoy the evening. Thanks, Ofra. Yeah, warm welcome from myself as well. So as Ofra says, I'm one of the professional leads for education here at the RCN. And the last couple of years, I've been on secondment, uh, leading the work stream to develop RCN Learn, which is our online platform we launched a year ago. And we do continue to develop as we get feedback. So I really hope you enjoy uh, the walk round. Understanding that we all learn differently, I am going to do a live demonstration, but also there's a QR code code on screen for about the next 10-15 seconds should you wish to use your phone to scan the QR code you can use the link that Abby's popped in in the Q&A section but absolutely you will receive these in the slide deck in the coming weeks but I'm going to do a live demonstration so I'm going to share my screen now I'm hoping that you have heard about RCN Learn if not um, here is the screen this is the landing page what I do want to say is it is inclusive. You can use it on any handheld device, 
uh, so your phone, your tablet or your laptop. So I am in your shoes. I am in health and social care as well. I understand that you need to be able to access learning in your workplace. So we have made it um, accessible on all those devices. Feedback from your colleagues are telling me that when you use RCN Learn or any RCN products for the first time, um, often you've not used it or you've not used it recently, you'll need to change your password and your colleagues are reporting back, they forget they've used their work logins. So please, when you're trying to reset the password to use it, remember it might have got into your spam box. So lots of feedback on that they've asked me to pass on. Well, it's quite normal. So as you can see, this is our landing page and I have about seven minutes now to walk you through some of those key elements. On the landing page, you'll see at the top here where I'm demonstrating on the top right, this is where you will log in, <clears throat> excuse me, using your um, email attached to your RCN account or your RCN account number. And it was, um, there's a link there for people to help you should you have any issues. We'll just walk down the front page to start with. We'll come back to the search facility. You will see that you can sign in as a non-member. I'll come to that in a moment. If you're a member, you will have two uh, yellow boxes. You can access learning that are member appropriate and the free learning. And if you are an RCNI Plus subscriber, which is nothing new, we've just linked that through from the RCN Publishing, RCNI Publishing House, so you're not moving from one page to the other. You'll find our feature content, and these are linked to um, annual days, monthly days, so Diabetes Awareness Month, Menopause Month. We highlight specific learning. And there are other links down below that I'll leave you to explore when uh, you have more time. You'll notice on the top ribbon here where I'm demonstrating, we have more information for you. If you have questions about the benefits of using RCN Learn and how we got to where we are, in the help section is also an FAQ, a facts section. But I think it's a really exciting addition is a new portfolio. We have a portfolio for every member category and you certainly have one for our nursing support work category. And when you log in, it will recognise you as a nursing support worker and it will automatically lead you to that template. Please do have a look. It's a fab place for recording all your CPD, your training, your experiences and any feedback you wish to hold. Really helpful for when you're going for job interviews or for your appraisals. And you can just see I'm just demonstrating that here now. There will be a webinar for the portfolio in the coming weeks. So do have a look on the RCN website from time to time and uh, do come along. We'll meet you there as well. So back to the search facility. And just before I move on to the search facility, the biggest message I want to get across this evening to you is that around 80% of all learning on RCN Learn is appropriate for any role in any working environment. So it's appropriate for students, registered nurses, nursing support workers, our nurse associate colleagues. It's where you see your CPD requirement and your interests. If there are any specific for nurses, so for example, it might be a career framework for cancer nurses, you can certainly look at it and I'll help you identify those as we go through the search. So you can use the search box for a specific, but I'm going to use the view all courses that I'm circling at the moment so you can see the full breadth. What I would say is go to this middle box first and when you're a member, you can see you can select member only um, information, but you'll also be able to access that learning for free to logged in users. Our members told us through a year of engagement products, they wanted something for their membership for learning, but they also wanted to support the wider workforce. So our non-members and about a third of our learning resources are for non-members. And they are things like um, sponsored resources, um, competencies, frameworks and guidance. So the 70 percent is for our members only. You'll see there's two types on this right, the learning types. We have a resource which is clinical information that you can read, discuss with your team, reflect. Or there's the course and that includes bite sized pieces and programs. But we'll leave that open for now. You can also use the subject drop down list with many subjects and that changes depending on um, our new resources that come along. 
So I thought we'd try diabetes. It's a general subject for hopefully for our audience this evening. And I'm going to walk you through the tiles. All of the tiles have a format, so I'll just particularly use one and you'll know how to use um, the others moving forward. So we'll go through overview of diabetes. So we click on the tile. We can instantly see there's a matching image. You'll see it's a resource, so it's just clinical information, interesting clinical information. You'll see it's available for members here where I'm circling. Now you'll see who is this resource, resource for. You'll see three sentences throughout RCN Learn. You'll see the main one. So remember that 80% of resources are available for all membership and role categories. And this says it's for nursing, nursing support workers across all settings. It will tell you what it will give you. It will tell you when it was last reviewed so you know it's up to date. And for example, here, the resource lead here is Callum and you can email Callum if you've got any questions about his resource. And then we'll click on to view resource just as an example, lots of information and links to our forums and our library services, the subject guides. I'm going to use the back arrow. And I'm going to use these hands. If you click on to RC and learn hands, it will take you back to the, the page. So there is a specific learning course for you and it's first steps. You may have heard of this amazing resource. It's designed for our nursing support worker colleagues. So again, it's the same style tile. <clears throat> Excuse me. You will see it's available to everyone. So this specific resource is for members and non-members and non-members only have to do a once on um, login and it will recognise them. You'll see who it's for. This is for healthcare assistants and students training to be healthcare assistant. What will you learn if there's a certificate um, with this resource? And there is when it was last reviewed and it's offer our professional lead. We'll click on the details. You'll see this looks slightly different. It will give an overview. There's a great uh, film clip here to help you know more about the programme. And it'll take you to the Enrol platform and you'll start your study. You can start and stop so you can study at your own pace if you if you need to. We'll go back. <clears throat> go back onto the um, RCN Learn. And the last style I want to show you is the MND resource, just so you get a flavour of all the different styles. We'll click on the MND resource. It's the same format. It's for everyone because this is a sponsored resource. And when we open the resource, you'll see clearly this is a sponsored and a collegiate document with the RCN. And this is a different style, so you can work through, answer the questions, make notes, a different style of resource. I'm going to go back to RCN Learn. I'm going to use the hands to go back. The last tab I'm going to uh, discuss with you is the organisational products where I'm circling on the top. We'll click on there and these are some of our programmes that we deliver at the RCN independently so you can purchase your own place or these can be commissioned by your employer. And I wanted to point out there's a specific leadership programme for your role for those band levels two to four. Uh, do take a look. You can always go and talk to your employers. But I just wanted to make you know, uh, aware that we do have leadership courses for all grades across the health and social care workforce. And my last comment on this page, we have two CPD courses with academic credits that you can self fund or your employer can fund you to come through. And there are no prerequisites to this course. If you wish to study at level six or seven, you can. There'll be no requirement for any evidence that you um, have previously studied on levels six or seven. And my time is coming to an end. So I'm going to stop sharing and I have one final comment for you. You will find shortly a link to the RCN Foundation. There is um, a group of ed uh, education and research grants that you can apply for. You don't have to be a member of the RCN as long as you're working in the UK. And I'll pop that uh, link in and they can fund an RCN programme or any other programme if you're successful.
And that's my 10 minutes. So I'm going to pause there. Thank you. And I'll hand you over to my colleague, Amy Tank from the RCN Library and Information Services. Thank you, Amy. Thanks, Andrea. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, I'm Amy. I'm the Information Skills Manager at the RCN Library, um, and I'm just going to spend a few minutes giving you a really quick overview of the library and what's included as part of your RCN membership. So the RCN Library website is kind of your one stop shop for everything that you'll need from the library. Um, there's a link to it in the top banner of the RCN website or just typing RCN Library into Google will bring us up very quickly. Um, on the website, there's a library search box, which is kind of front and centre, where you can search for books, ebooks, journals, articles and more. Um, it's really straightforward to use. It's a bit like using a Google search. Um, you just put pop your search topic in um, and then you can use the filters on the left hand side to refine by things like date or the type of publication that you're looking for. Um, if you're looking to do more comprehensive searching, um, we do also provide access to um, lots of the big nursing databases. Um, so things like CINAHL, British Nursing Index, MCARE, um, as well as loads of others. Um, and when you're accessing any of the RCN library resources, you'll be prompted to log in using your usual RCN membership details. Um, we also have around 50 subject guides which are created by the library in collaboration with the RCN forums and some of the professional leads um, and these collate together a selection of key resources, books and journals um, from across a host of nursing specialisms and kind of wider topic areas um, so they're a really useful source of information. Uh, within the library, we provide individual one to one training um, support so we can do it both online and in person. Um, so these could be to help you search a particular database that you're not familiar with or you might want some help with referencing or, for instance, you've done a search, but it's just not bringing back what you were wanting or expecting. Um, we can help you with all of that stuff. Um, we also offer a variety of group training sessions um, on topics such as evaluating healthcare information, easy referencing, and we do offer kind of a general introduction to the RCN library, um, which is running next week on the 9th of July. Um, so yeah, Tuesday at one o'clock and it's a 45 minute session. Um, our group training sessions range from kind of quick 30 minutes, which we kind of designed to be done in a lunch break, um, to much more comprehensive two hour sessions. Um, and we do provide CPD certificates to attendees if they need anything. Um, we do also offer weekly drop in sessions in the London Library and Museum if you do want to pop by and see us in person. Um, if you're looking to do some research for a qualification or doing something a bit more in depth at work, um, we offer a literature searching service to members, which is very popular. Um, it's not available if you're on a student membership, but is available to all other members. Um, all you do is fill in an online request form and tell us about the topic that you're searching, any filters that you'd like applying, say you only want articles from the last five years, whether you're looking at UK or internationally. Um, we will then go away and search the relevant nursing databases for you and then provide you with a bibliography of relevant sources within 10 working days. Um, there's no limit to how many literature searches you can request, although we can only do one at a time. So as soon as one's done, you're more than welcome to fill in another. A lot of the library's collection is available online, um, but if there is something that's only showing up on library search as a physical item, or if you're like me, you just prefer having a real book, um, we do offer a free postal loan service for members. Um, you simply fill in the form on the website, tell us who you are and what books you'd like, and we get those posted out to you. And it's completely free for you to post them back to us. Um, you just download a returns label, and it's like when you do your online shopping, you just take it to a shop and send it back. Um, the library has a customer services team who are always really happy to help with queries. So if you're not sure where to go or how to start using the library or you have a general question, you can drop them an email or use the live web chat, which is on the library website. Um, it's not a chatbot. It is staffed by librarians um, and library staff between nine and seven each day. 
We currently have a nursing support workers exhibition in the London Library and Museum, which is amazing and looks at sort of the history of the role and its impact on the nursing workforce. Um, for anyone who's not London based, there is an online exhibition available as well. And if anyone is based near Edinburgh, um, the exhibition will be transferring up there later in the year. So I have popped links to kind of all the relevant things that I've talked about. Um, but if you do have any questions at all, just give us a shout and we'll be more than happy to to talk to you about any of the library services and support. And that's it from me. Thanks, Amy. Um, my name is uh, Christine Callender and I'm um, the head of nursing here at the RCN. Um, and I'm just going to spend a few minutes um, provide to provide you with some information about forums which are which are part of your um, membership offer. So as you will see here we have a number of forums um, we have 35 to be exact um, and forums are basically um, a group um, of members with either with a particular interest in a specific clinical area or they may be working in a specialist area um, of nursing. Um, you will see from this slide that the numbers of um, the membership for each of those forums, it varies. Our smallest is um, 602, which is our midwifery forum, to the largest, which is over 14,000 members. So there are, they are um, varied. Um, and it's open to anyone as part of the um, RCN who are part of the RCN um, uh, membership. Um, you may want to know how we decide on the forums that we have um, currently. Um, I have to say some of that is historic, um, but um, it really is dependent on our members and we are we've recently um, developed um, a, a, some criteria for setting up um, a forum as well as disestablishing a forum. So how if you wanted to set up a forum, then that information will be available shortly on the website so you can see how that that happens. But as I said, it is forums are open to any one of our, our members um, that are part of the RCN. So what are the benefits of our forum? So um, I, the first bullet point says there that uh, forums make a vital contribution to the professional work of the RCN. And I'll come back to that just to demonstrate or to show how um, that um, how, how our members make that difference. Um, as I've um, already said that the forums are basically groups of RCN members with a shared interest or they may be working um, in a specialist area, uh, a particular area. And I want to emphasise again that it's open to anyone who is part of the RCN membership. Um, I've also mentioned that they are part of the this, you know, joint being able to join a forum is part of the membership um, offer. Um, members of forums can be involved as much as they wish or as little as they wish. It really is um, down to individual members as to how um, how involved they wish to become. Um, and also just to mention that members are not restricted to just one forum. Um, although we don't recommend more than about three, but, you know, it is entirely up to our members. You can join as many um, as you wish. Um, and you can also change um, your forums if, say, for example, one year you you may have an interest in, I don't know, or working in cancer care, but then move jobs to um, working in diabetes services you can change um forums or you can have both if that's if you so wish um the forums uh they provide opportunities um for support um of professional learning and development um they also um, provide an opportunity for members to um 
contribute to sort of the development of nursing uh, practice uh, and, and for getting involved in some of the clinical issues um, that affect you in your in your practice. And 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 I think it's important to say that, um, you know, not to think of, you know, I'm the nursing support worker, I cannot get involved. You very much can get involved. And very often we are looking for um, information from all different um, the from different perspectives of our members. So, you know, the, your perspective may be slightly different from the registered nurse or the nursing associate. We are looking for the contribution or the, the forums will be looking for the contribution from all our members. So it's, it's just to emphasize that your contribution is just as important as any um, any other member of the forum. So I just want to highlight some of the key areas of the forum activity. Um, and this is not necessarily, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, sort of um, an exhaustive list. Um, there are many ways in which our members um, uh, can get involved um, and there are multiple ways in which we are, as the we as in the RCN are reliant on our members because remembering that um, you know you are the ones that's working in the area or may have that special interest, so you've got that expert knowledge. Um, so the first on looking on the left hand side around it's around developing um, clinical guidance and standards. Um, our members, very often, many of the, um, the resources Andrea spoke of earlier around RC, um, RCN Learn, and many of the resources have been developed um, in collaboration with our members um, around sort of clinical guidance and clinical standards. Um, so very much, um, you know, we are very much reliant on our, our clinicians. Um, the development of RCN um, and review of RCN publications. So as well as developing um, some of the publications and the resources that we do, we are, you, uh, our members very much contribute to the review of those publications. Um, again, because this is where, you know, within our forums is where the clinical expertise lie. Um, we do um, go to our members for ex um, expert advice. So we sometimes require that advice. Um, it may well be um, because of changes in um, uh, in uh, legislation um, in some practice areas. We would um, most definitely want to consult with our members around um, some of those clinical areas of practice. Equally, um, we members uh, contribute to policy development. Um, again, um, it is about sort of there are changes, whether those changes be um, through the Department of Health and Social Care. Um, it may well be um, with um, sort of local organisations, changes around policy um, and uh, uh, some of these organisations come to the RCN, um, either come to the RCN, I should say, for a view, or we at the RCN have been, um, we're aware of some of these changes that are taking place, and we would very much look to our members to um, for some advice and input into some of those um, policy developments that may be taking place or there may well be new policy development so really influencing that. Um, our members are key to the delivery of our workshops and conferences um, and some of our digital events um, that we um, undertake um, and in very often they it's our members that are leading that again with their clinical expertise um, we often get, um, there are a number of consultations that come into um, 
the organization, the RCN, are invited to contribute to. Um, and again, um, very often it's our members that contribute to the responses to those consultations. And we look to our members to provide the clinical expertise around that. And then the last point that I've got there is just around representation. So we, as the RCN, as you can imagine, we get um, invited to a number of events, um, developments. Um, it might be um, uh, uh, politi uh, not political, but, you know, members of um, parliament um, events, um, all party parliamentary events. Um, and we sometimes ask our members who have that clinical expertise um, to go and represent the RCN. Clearly, if we are asking our members to represent the RCN, we will support you in that process um, and make sure you're well briefed. Be, so we wouldn't just send you off um, to do that, but we would um, support you around that. Um, and, and that provides, um, you know, great opportunities for our members, uh, give some exposure um, to some of the work and also be quite influential in development to some of that work. So this slide is just really um, giving a demonstration of some of the work that has taken place. And it is really just a small, a very small demonstration of some of the work um, that has taken place, uh, that took place rather last year um, and very much led by our, our members. So we've got um, the exhibition on the left hand side there. That was the. Um, exhibition that raised awareness about the history of um, children and young people nursing. That exhibition has just completed and is um, on its way up to Scotland now. Um, but that was very much with our forum members involved in that, um, developing, in, developing that. Um, the centre there is just um, one of our members who spoke um, at Congress last year, and I'm sure most um, or many of you um, will know that we've just um, we're just what two two weeks, two or three weeks out of um, Congress this year. But our members are very much part and parcel of um, the uh, the work um, and the programs of Congress. And then on the right hand side, there is just a selection of some of the resources that our members have um, been uh, have developed by our members who's been very influential in developing those resources. And then finally, the learning resource that's in the um, the bottom left hand corner there, which was uh, called Diabetes Essential, um, which, around, which is around um, as the title it, um, says, uh, it's around um, uh, diabetes and it's a resource that members can dip in and out of. So it's a digital resource which enables you to really go to the bits um, where you want to update your knowledge base or learn more about. You can just dip in and out of those areas. And then the final slide is just, you know, I've mentioned that this is part of your, um, if you are a member of the RCN, it is part of your, the membership offer um, to um, sign up to a forum. It's really easy. You just need to go into your, um, log into you, your My RCN on the website um, and then go to the get involved section and then there will be a drop down list. There will be forums, it will say forums and net networks and there'll be a drop down list with all of the forums um, that I um, indicated in the first slide. And you can just decide which one of those um, you've got a particular interest in or your the area that you're working in. You just need to click on that. Um, and then you, in effect, have signed up to that forum. You then need to just go back to your My RCN and you'll see the list of forums that you have um, you have clicked on. So um, 
please, if you haven't already uh, joined a forum, please do consider joining one. It's a great way to um, collaborate and um, learn more about the area, the specialist area of interest or the area that you, um, you are working with. Hi, so we're going to give you a little bit of the members feedback on the resources because Kevin and I have both used the resources while we've been within the RCN and we've been, I've been within the RCN for gosh, it must be 15 years or more now. Um, I'm actually a HA educator in my trust, um, so I use a lot of the resources for the HAs, but I also involve them in the resources as well. Um, first Steps is essential to my HEAs in our trust. Um, it's a really good platform for new HEAs that are coming in that need to know, you know, things about safeguarding. Accountability is a massive thing for, for HEAs um, and the RCN go into great detail in that within the First Steps programme. So I would recommend any HEA that is new to healthcare to definitely join the, that First Steps programme. Um, Kevin, would you like to say something? Yeah, the, the resources that for the first steps is one of the main ones that we would sort of ask you to do or to have a look at because it has a lot of valuable information within that, um, especially working through it. And you get to understand your role a little bit on what you are actually being asked to do. And also what you can, you know, push back and say, actually, that's not my remit. That's not for me. Um, so the first steps is the is a, a major one for us. And the other one that we've that's just um, sort of being launched is the portfolio um, where you're able to collate and collect everything for um, your job role, your job title, what you do, your um, qualifications that you have. Um, and it also links very well into when you do um, your uh, development um, portfolio as well within your workplace. And, and it, it, especially when you're having um, any meetings at all that you've got with your bosses for to extend your role if you want to go further. It's a good tool to have behind you to be able to enhance what you do in your workplace. The forums as well, as Christine said, it's vital that you have a look at those just to, to um, see what the forums do and, and, and to what it offers you within your workplace as well, because there's vital information in there. Um, it's took us um, a lot, 23 to 24 years. We have been now in the RCN and accepted into the RCN. And it is growing, you know, week on week, the numbers are growing. And it just goes to show how things are evolving within the RCN, how they are accepting HCAs, nursing associates and NAs within the role. Um, and it is a, it's a, I think the RCN is the best place for us to be as a union, as a membership, because it's for nurses, for nursing as a, as a whole. So you are encompassed with all of that for the knowledge and the background and and the support that you get. Sharon? Yeah, I totally agree with Kevin. Um, and I think, you know, sometimes it's the beginning of your career as a healthcare assistant. And, you know, the RCN can offer you ways in which you can progress. Um, there's lots of, of, of literature out there and resources online to explain you how to get to where you want to get to. Um, so I, I, I just think it, it's it's a resource that is is not used enough by by our nursing support workers. I don't think some people realise exactly what is involved. Um, you know, you can you you can develop your career by going on an RCM pathway. Um, so I I was thoroughly recommend it. I belong to one of the forums. Obviously, mine is the education forum because that's what pa I'm passionate about. Um, and I learn so much new information from there that often I don't get in the organisation that I work in. So I would thoroughly recommend joining a forum as well. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, of information there, but also within our libraries, we have a multitude of literature that is there, especially for delegation um, that's there. And also for um, those that are wanting to do it. I mean, I, I started off as an auxiliary 
and now I'm a, a nursing associate. So the, the vast changes that I've seen within the years of being in, in what I do has changed a lot and we're being asked to do more and more and more. Um, so I think it's vital that you, you are within a support group or within uh, places that this can be discussed. Um, certainly bring it to our chair, our committees, and we, we'll, we'll discuss it and debate it and we'll try and get you the support we need it because that's what we're there for. We are a member-led committee. I'm a member-led member of council. What I take to council or to our meetings is from the voices of our members, as do all of those that are in the areas. Um, from your locality branches, they all link into us and we feed back into them. Sharon? Yeah, and I'm the South East member of that committee, so I, I, I value what Kevin has just said. Um, it's a fantastic committee to be a part of. I've only been a part of it for just over a year now. Um, but again, I've learned so much through being on that committee and how our voice is really heard out there. Um, I, I don't think nursing support workers quite realise how much the committee fights for them. And it would be really good for uh, nursing support workers to get in touch with us and tell us actually what is it that they want us to bring to the table. Because half the time we're guessing at what you want, it would be really good to get some voices out there and you tell us what you want from us because we're willing to, we're willing to look after you. We just need to know how you need to be looked after. Yeah, we we will certainly support if there were if, again, if there was any issues or questions that you had about what was happening in your workplace, were you being asked to do something that wasn't within your remit or wasn't? It's about being able to look at what you actually do um, and we would fully support that. There's a lot of there's a lot of um, members who are as well going above and beyond um, what they actually do, you know, they, they go that extra mile. We'd like to hear about that. You know, can we, can we, as we say, shine a light on you? That is part of us for our Nursing Support Workers Day. Shine a light. We like to shine a light on what we do because we certainly want to shout loudly about what we do in the workplace because we are a voice. And uh, as if I'm chair or I'm in council, I make sure with you that that voice is heard. Um, and it's vital that we we push forward because we are growing in number because there is a lot of people out there actually who do not know as a HCA that this resource, that this information is there for them to help them and to grow. And it's vital that we get that that message out to them. So when you're out and about in your workplace, just say, oh, I was on this meeting last night and I learned about this and I saw this. Push that word out. Yeah, I, I echo what, what Kevin says. Um, and we're, we're on the website. You can go and look at the committee page. You can see us all. You can see which region, um, you know, whichever region you come from, you can see which representative is there for you. Um, they're, 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 even if you belong to a branch, all the information about your branches are on there. I'm a treasurer of our local branch because I believe a nursing support worker should be a part of everything that the RCN does. So get get in there, find out how you can be involved as well, because it, it will really, really make a difference to the nursing support workforce. Yeah, it does a massive difference, massive difference. Thanks so much. Um... Kevin and, and Sharon, we're just looking to see if there's any questions. Um, I think that we've had a question from Rasika um, and you've got some responses there, uh, Rasika. I hope those are useful uh, to you. Um, I can't see any other questions as I look. So I, I think, first of all, I, it's quite a lot of information that's been shared uh, this evening, uh, but I really want to extend my sincere thanks to all of the speakers that have um, joined us this evening and all of the people behind the scenes uh, as well. Um, and also thank you to all of you that have joined um, this evening. There's still time for some questions if you've got any questions, then we're happy to draft those as they, they come in, but I can't see any coming in at the moment. But there is a lot of useful uh, resources um, 
in terms of the Royal College of Nursing offer. Um, so please do look at those because as Kevin has rightly said, many of our members don't realise uh, the wider offer within the Royal College of Nursing in relation to uh, certainly learning and, and development. And that's really crucial um, in the nursing support workforce. I'm not seeing any other questions coming to the chat. So um, we will put a slide in relation to some useful resources um, at the Royal College of Nursing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the last word to Kevin Morley, who is our Royal College of Nursing Nursing Support Worker Committee Chair and Council Representative. So over to you, Kevin. Thank you, Ofra. Thank you for your input and thank you to every single person who has put this together tonight. Thank you so much for all of your hard work and uh, your presenting. And also thank you to everybody else who online has joined us uh, because hopefully you'll take away something from this and hopefully you will be more interactive with us and be active with us. We would like to interact with you. So if you've got any questions or anything at all, please pass them on um, to us via the website or try and get in contact with us via our web page. So thank you so much for being with us. We hope that you found it beneficial and we hope that you've taken a lot of information from it. Don't forget, it's 23 years since the HCAs were welcomed into the RCN. And we certainly know that it is growing and we certainly want to hear the voice and we certainly want to get our voice heard. And we also want to support you in the best way possible we can. And I think the RCN is for us. Thank you, everybody.